Thank you, Ed. I'm very grateful to CCIA for putting this program together. CCIA is really the leading um, you know, association focusing on high-tech antitrust issues, which obviously are going to become a tremendous focus of the, the new administration's antitrust uh, program. Uh, if you want to, their website is just filled with tons of really valuable information to help you understand these issues, and they play a seminal role in being a pu advocate not only for their members but for the public interest in high-tech antitrust cases. Um, I'm here to tell you about the Google Book settlement, and you know I think you know we have to start off and really recognize what Google has accomplished through um, its sur its uh, book search endeavor. Uh, Google, at its own expense, at its own risk, went and yeah, uh, went and entered into arrangements with major research libraries to scan. Um, millions of books to create a library of unprecedented dimensions. Um, and I think there's been a lively debate from an antitrust perspective about the competitive impact of the Google Book Search uh, endeavor and the settlement of it, but I don't think we should lose track of what Google has really accomplished. Um, in ways, I think it's like the develop the finding of a new world. That's why I titled my paper, The Earth is Not Flat. You know, Google's uh, uh, endeavors here are akin to that of uh, Christopher Columbus. The critics here have to keep in mind that the world actually is round um, and that what Google has accomplished is really substantial. By the way, to learn more about the important aspects of the Google Book Settlement, um, you, go, you can turn to uh, their website, books.google.com slash settlement, um, and you'll learn a lot about the pro-competitive aspects of the settlement. <coughs> I started to examine the settlement because there was all this buzz about Google and possible antitrust stuff, uh, antitrust concerns raised by Google's conduct. And I know from being an antitrust enforcer, and I spent over 15 years of my life doing that, that you have to be very cautious about where you go and invest your antitrust enforcement resources. It is important not to confuse size or popularity with the actual existence of monopoly power. Monopoly power is possessed by firms which really are capable of establishing a chokehold in the market and really keeping other rivals at bay. And just because someone has gone and created products that are really popular and successful, through, as Judge Han called, superior foresight industry and insight, um, doesn't mean that they should receive special scrutiny under the antitrust laws. I focus my attention on the Google Book Settlement and the Books Right and, and the Books Right Registry, which is created under the Books uh, the Settlement, because there was such a great controversy here. Let's get the basic facts down. Google decided that this was an adventure worth engaging in in 2004 and began entering into relationships with the major research libraries. It developed the equipment to do scanning. For those of us who've spent hundreds, dozens of hours before scanning machines, we'd certainly like to know about this equipment. And it scanned millions and millions of books. They were sued in a suit uh, by publishers and authors, a class action suit in 2004. That suit was resolved in 2008 in a class action settlement, which is currently under review by the courts. Under the settlement, Google will create a nonprofit organization, the Books Right Registry, to represent the interests of the authors of the, and publishers and to locate rights holders who've been separated from their works. And the Books Rights Registry will deal with the issues of going and ascertaining the rights and making sure that the publishers and authors are properly compensated. Now, let's start off. The, to me, there's only two issues here. They're actually relatively straightforward. Are there consumer benefits? Is there some significant harm to competition? I don't think that anybody at this panel will be, or any place else, will be able to argue that there are not substantial consumer benefits from what Google has achieved here. It's created an information base of unprecedented proportions. Uh, Michael Keller, Stanford University's librarian, uh, said the settlement promises to change profoundly the level of access that may be afforded to the printed cultural record 
so much of which is presently available to only those who are able to visit one of the world's great libraries. If I want to go and find an obscure commentary on a 13th century Talmudic uh, commentary by a rabbi, I used to have to travel to Oxford or maybe Jerusalem. Sometime in a couple years, I'm just going to have to go onto the internet and I'll be able to pull up that material. Second, and I'll get into this in great detail, one of the problems we currently have in many endeavors in society is confusion over intellectual property rights. One of the issues that CCIA often weighs in on are how, um, how patent thickets go and prevent innovation in lots of high-tech markets. Well, there are problems like that in the copyright world, too. And what Google has done through the scanning process by entering into agreements with these research libraries and publishers, and most important, through its settlement, is go and resolve, to a large extent, these intellectual property rights disputes. That's good for Google. That's good for consumers. That's good for the person who wants to create the next alternative to the Google book search system because they've resolved the greatest obstacle to a competitive alternative. Finally, we should recognize how what Google has done has fundamentally dem democratized information. That's what Google is about, it seems to me. I basically represent consumer groups. I represent people who really can't afford to oftentimes purchase books. Um, uh, and those, for, those anti for those people, the Google Book Settlement and what Google does really democratizes the access to information. Now you don't have to be in Oxford or Harvard or someplace else. Anybody can find that information. And just as the creation of Google Search has led exponentially to um, an increase in you know, research and our understanding of issues, so hopefully will the creation of the Google Book Library lead to um, the same. The essential antitrust question in this case in involving the settlement is, does the settlement increase entry barriers? That's it from my perspective as a former antitrust enforcer. And I think the answer to that question is unquestionably no. By the way, listen to the question. Does it enhance entry barriers? No one can dispute that it's not easy to do what, Google's do, what Google did. Um, it's expensive. It's a risky endeavor. Um, it you know, involves a lot of time and effort. But the question is, does the settlement make it more difficult for someone to follow in Google's footsteps? And I think if you carefully look at the settlement, you'll see the answer is no. First, the settlement expands the public domain. The books that are readily accessible that are in the public domain increase because Google has basically scanned all of these works. And the works that are currently in the public domain that Google has scanned, you can go and scan them yourselves. Second, the settlement resolved uncertain um, in digital rights. There was basically a Mexican standoff going on between rights holders, publishers or authors, and people who might want to use those rights. We don't know which rights fall, you know, are available, which rights are not. Congress has sort of looked at this issue and sort of said, God, this would be a difficult issue to resolve. Fortunately, Google um, stepped in and um, went and did the scanning process and now has entered into a settlement to go and resolve those digital rights. To ensure that copyright holders are aware of their rights under the settlement, the settlement established the most comprehensive class action notification system ever. It's gone out in 36 languages. They've really gone and done a yeoman's job of it. Now, some people might suggest no, the settlement might create problems because there are certain orphan works that only Google is going to have access to. An orphan work is something that, you know, just uh, it's a, no one's there to claim, a, 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 to claim the copyright over it. Um, it's clear, however, that Google will not obtain a monopoly of uh, orphan works because nothing in the settlement makes entry by scanning orphan works more difficult. In fact, by resolving these intellectual property rights issues, going and scanning and securing the rights to orphan works will be simpler. Second, we've got to realize what orphan works are. 
There are relatively few of them, and you know, we hate to say it, but they have indifferent parents. So these orphan works are, uh, you know, probably of relatively little significance. It's difficult to sort of see a scenario where Google is going to be able to extract harm its rivals through its control of orphan work.